Welcome everyone. My guest today is Kristen Messerly, co-founder and executive director of First Home IQ to talk about financial literacy and the opportunity for loan officers and real estate agents to connect with consumers on this important topic. We may have just gotten back from Gathering of Eagles, but we're not done with events for 2023 yet. This October, we're headed right back to Austin, Texas for Housing Wire Annual, and we want to see you there. We've got a power-packed agenda with content such as our Women of Influence speakers, peak performer playbooks, CEO playbooks, and more to propel your company forward, as well as a bunch of networking events. Because this event is open to real estate executives, mortgage title, and everyone in between, you really have the opportunity to network with people from all across the housing ecosystem. If you want to learn more about the event, or if you're already ready to get registered, head over to housingwire.com on the events tab and you can learn all about it. Not to mention, if you're an HW Plus member, you're going to get 50% off your ticket. So get registered for HW Plus and get registered for the event so we can see you out in Austin. Kristen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a big fan of the podcast. Oh, thanks. You know what? Um, I've been on your podcast. You have been on Housing Housing News with Clayton. You needed to be on Housing Wire Daily. So very glad that we have you on and especially to talk about this subject that I know is near and dear to your heart and my heart. And also, um, it's just so cool. You have been a an advocate for millennials for a long time. And now seeing you like it's it's not just millennials, but like young home buyers, Gen Z. So we're, we're moving down the, the next generation. Yeah, it makes me feel a little old. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't believe we've got another generation here. It's um, but yeah, it's also really exciting to see, you know, how how many things have changed from looking at what millennials are looking for in a home buying, you know, transaction to Gen Z and how we're shifting as an industry. So so let's talk about that a little bit because I think, you know, we know that affordability is really such a huge issue for first time home buyers. And at the same time, I feel like um, even though there's a lot of information available, um, trusted information might be a, a different thing for consumers. So tell me a little bit about First Home IQ and what the mission is there. Yeah. So, I mean, to your point about some of those barriers, we're looking at how limited trusted access to trusted information and resources and support that the next generation really has. Um, even though they have access to so much information and social media, uh, they don't know who to trust and they're, ac they're getting a lot of misinformation out there. So with First Home IQ, our mission is to uh, provide educate home buyer and financial literacy education, resources and inspiration to um, to support their financial journey. So we have um, you know online courses and uh, curriculum for schools and then also presentation materials for people who want to do presentations in their communities. Well, I think that's so interesting, especially that you're starting with like um, schools because we all know I mean, what, what's the you know what's all the meme is like, oh, I can I know the you know algebra or I, you know I can do this trig thing, but I have no idea how a mortgage works or I, I don't know yeah. how to do my taxes, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we're just launching, I'm just getting the data back from SCORE, where we've put together, I'm doing a kind of quiz survey with uh, it's a first home IQ. There are 25 questions to really evaluate someone's um, literacy in buying their first home. And nobody knows anything. I mean, it's not going to be a surprise to anyone, I think, that um, that the scores are really low. And we, we tested this with 300 uh, people between the ages of um, 16 to 44. Um, and then I'm going to look at this with the older groups as well, just to, to see. But um, but yeah, we're, we don't know what we're doing. And I think people at the youngest age, if you can educate them, they're going to be making different decisions around student loan debt, or credit card debt, um, things that have really prevented millennials from buying homes. Um, so I, I think it's a really big opportunity to have a, a big impact. I think the other thing is like, um, you know, uh, the Gen Z generation, but some of millennials too, they feel like the the deck is stacked against them because because of the, you know, run up in home prices, because we're now, we now have higher mortgage rates. I mean, especially when it comes to buying a home, I feel like they can feel like uh, there's no hope. I just am never going to be able to buy a home. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, if you look at, at least in my TikTok and Instagram real feed, it's so many videos of people joking about not ever being able to buy a home. And it's a lot of Gen Z people saying like, oh, you know, yeah, it was so nice. Baby boomers right now are getting this like, you know, their $40,000 home. They're selling for $2 million and Gen Z are like, what? You got to buy a home? <laughs> And, um, and it's really like this dark humor around access to home ownership. Um, and so, you know, I, I think part of our mission is to provide some of that inspiration and, and also really educate them in a way that helps them understand how they can, our tagline is own your future. So how they can, you know, ha like have a future that includes having a home as part of their bigger picture, not just saying, yes, home ownership is the, you know, path for everyone, but this can be part of your path if you want it to be. I think it's so interesting. So the, um, the three co-founders of your company, right, are, you know, it's you, it's Dave Savage, you know, founder of Mortgage Coach, huge name in the industry, Todd Bookspan. So, you know, a mortgage originator. So three people who know the mortgage industry and know what the challenges are, and then like set up this separate thing to be like attacking it from a different angle, right? Like attacking it from like financial literacy and education to get those people ready in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think our skill sets and experience are just really kind of perfect for this. Um, for me, I started out my career as a social worker and I worked a lot with um, unhoused youth and, um, and immigrant populations and a lot of people that were, you know, in very difficult situations. And I started creating education content that kind of turned into a different avenue with cultural outreach, which I um, had as a for most of my career following that. Um, and I think now coming together and bringing the um, nonprofit experience and education experience with their industry knowledge and um, and leadership is really, it's really exciting. And I think um, comes together to bring a great recipe for this. It really does feel like it's coming full circle. And I think it's super helpful because you guys know so many people in the industry or, you know, you're a trusted source. So let's talk about some of your initiatives because you have a really um, interesting ambassador program that I would love to talk about. That's a we're really getting to the heart of it here. So let's let's talk about uh, what you do with the ambassador program. Yeah, we are so thrilled to be able to announce this with you guys. Um, the ambassador program is really a way to bring together other industry professionals who are passionate about this mission. One of the things that Dave, Todd, and I have talked a lot about with First Home IQ is that this is not our nonprofit. This is the industry, industry's nonprofit. This is, there's so many people that have talked about wanting to give back and support the next generation and making smarter decisions about buying a home. And, um, and there are so many things stacked against the next generation. So, um, so the ambassador program is a way for us to create a sustainable, sustainably funded nonprofit. Um, and do it in a way that brings together other leaders in the industry that are passionate about this mission. Um, so the ambassador program is um, developed right now. We're, we're launching a beta program where we're just going to have a, a kind of smaller group of um, loan mortgage professionals who want to donate per loan um, or we have like a suggested donation of $100 per closed loan. Um, and they are going to give feedback on the program so we can decide how to really create something that is helping them be seen as like, you know, leaders in their industry, giving back in their community, and also um, be able to make a real impact with that. So um, I'm really excited because we have like a whole huge plan of programs that with that funding, we'll be able to immediately make progress on. and. Um, and where we had a, an incredible response from the industry. It's been so inspiring to see how many people do want to be a part of this. So let's stick in there a little bit. So you're talking about $100 per closed loan that people, it's not like, oh, I'm going to be amb ambassador for $100 a year. It's like $100 per closed line loan, which shows a great commitment, right? So when you first started talking to people, and I know you've had a huge response, 
what what was it that they were like attracted to? Like, yes, I want to do this. Like, what is it on their side that you're hearing that makes it uh, worthwhile for them? Yeah, for the people that want to participate at that level, it is total passion. I mean, people that are just really like, this is something I've been wanting to build. That's what a lot of people tell me is that they wanted to do something like this, and um, and that this really fits in with their you know their personal mission. Um, and so I think that there's mostly that side of things. I think there's a lot of people also that know that the next generation really values people who are giving back in their community. And this is a great way to build their brand as someone who is um, going to align with their values and be a trusted professional, you know, back to the point of like distrust in the industry with the next generation. That's a great way to build trust. Um, so I think there's that. I think we'll definitely expand this. And um, we've already been talking about how we could maybe create tiers because it is a lot of money um, to um, to ask of people in a pretty difficult time. But but we have seen such, again, an overwhelming response of, of people that want to, to give at this level. Um, but we, we do want to make sure that it's accessible to people to really be able to participate in this at any level. How do you distribute the information? Like, how are you reaching consumers? Um, I mean, it's great to have all these resources. It's great to set this up. How do you make sure that people know where to find you and that um, they're being directed there? That is going to be kind of part of this next phase. I mean, we've been building the content so far. Um, so we have online courses, everything from basic financial literacy, credit debt management, all of that through how to buy a home affordably, how to maintain the home. Um, and then just yesterday, we had a video shoot um, to create some really good video content. Um, and then we've been having conversations with schools and building connections with programs. So there, there's like some a really great program, for instance, in Orange County that works with children in families experiencing homelessness, and we and they uh, connect with all of the schools in Orange County. So, putting together a program for them to be able to uh, distribute there, or there's uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters we've been talking to and Junior Achievement. Um, so those types of organizations where we can impact them through their like levels of connection um, is going to be one method that we utilize. I really want to get to schools. And I think that with there's a lot of new um, laws or bills that are being passed around requiring financial literacy in the schools and high schools. So I think that there's maybe an opportunity there, um, but I haven't figured out yet. And I'm hoping through industry connections and people who, um, you know, participate either in the ambassador program or just want to uh, participate in the program can make some connections there um, to which we've been having some of those conversations so far. Um, so I think that will be part of it. Um, the colleges and, and universities we are having conversations with, and I think that's a great way to scale as well. Um, and then some of the uh, media programming um, is where I think we'll be able to have an impact. I think, you know, when you talk about the scope of that, it makes sense why there needs to be this whole separate thing, because, of course, we know a lot of lenders have um, home buyer resources. They try to they try to reach out, you know, financial literacy. But when you think about the scope of what you guys are trying to do and and at what level you're trying to do it within schools, that's really bigger than just one company can really do. Yeah. Right. And so and to have it like centralized and then all the companies, whether they're big or small, can point people to that. Um, I think that that really shows why it's more than just like, you know, because I, I do think a lot of lenders do a really great job already trying to have these resources for people, but it's not centralized. Yes, exactly. And one thing I didn't mention that is actually something that most people are really excited about is um, a lot of people want to do education in their community. And so um by us, we've created slide decks that are designed for that audience that are very engaging with you know, journal prompts and discussion questions and activities and that kind of stuff that then loan officers or uh, real estate agents or whoever can go into a, um, a school or a community event of some sort and do a presentation. And so a lot of people have the connection, but they don't want to spend the time, you know, or don't have the time or capacity to build out a program like that, you know, or uh, vice versa. 
And so we can provide the content education. And then we're also planning to provide support uh, as we have the, the funding and a capacity to be able to support this, to provide the support to connect them with people in their community so that they can do be the expert and go in and do a, a presentation. So I think that's going to be a great way to scale and, um, and for people to have impact. No, I think that's great. I think one of the things that really, one of the barriers or obstacles for people who want to do this. So first of all, in the last couple of years, people did not have time to be doing this. If you're a loan officer, if you're a real estate agent, you couldn't even keep up with, you know, the things that are making you money specifically on that day, much less, you know, investing in things that are going to pay off in, in the longer term, but you just don't have time. You're just trying to deal with it. So now is a good time, but still, I think there's the thought of people being like, I don't have time to, to spend. I have some time, but I don't have all of this time to develop this. That's not my expertise. So if you have something sort of ready built that they can jump into on a local level, makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I think, I mean, so many people have the expertise, but um, to be able to have a jumping off point, you know, and be able to add color to the slides that we've provided or stories or those types of things that can make a big difference. Um, and I, you know, we have like one ambassador, for instance, who is going to um, bring in a real estate agent to do some presentations in their community. And it's a great way for them to build those, you know, help the real estate agent build their brand in as a cause, you know, cause impact type of uh, brand as well and build those relationships. So I think those are some, you know, interesting ways and in creating social media content around that, that can really help them build new channels of business, though we definitely do not want to be, you know, we are about the impact of the next generation, not a lead source, though I think that it can be used as a way that to access, you know, build your brand, access new channels of business in a time that is pretty difficult for that. I think so too. It also, I like the fact that you're saying, you know, this is for uh, lenders, LOs and real estate agents. And those, and those two, you know, a lot of, I've talked to a lot of lenders who want to offer something of value to their real estate partners. Like this is a great way to do that. Right. I mean, you know, everyone's careful about RESPA and they want to make sure that everything is, um, you know, uh, above board. And this is an easy way to work together, collaborate together on something that's going to help anybody who wants to, to, you know, be seen as an expert and, and help the consumer at the, at the end point. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really interesting there. So you have some news to announce, right? So we're covering this news about that, the first ambassador. So tell us about that. Yeah. So we, I kind of uh, mentioned this earlier, we have a really uh, great group of ambassadors who have decided to join as this beta program. Um, we had a, like I said, a really great response from people um, uh, that, but we decided to choose just a small group to start with. Um, and uh, first of all, we had we have a growing group of founder friends, which means that they have donated a thousand dollars to be part of um, a group of a hundred people or less, and that continues to grow right now, um, who are advisors. And so anyone who is a loan officer or a real estate agent in that group is automatically an ambassador. And then we wanted to keep the, um, the ambassador program to around 20 people. Um, so we're being a little bit flexible right now. Some last minute people <laughs> hopping in here, but, um, but we ha and then we'll open this up. So if anyone is interested in joining the program, we are going to open this up to more people once we get some feedback um, from this initial group. Uh, but super excited. We, you know, we chose people that we know are going to be involved in providing feedback on the program itself and how we can improve it for the future ambassadors as well as consumers. Um, and provide sustainable funding for the organization. So we're super excited to announce this with um, with Housing Wire and uh, in this group that is um, is going to help us really launch First Home IQ. I mean, we we've like soft launch so far, but this is um, this is how we're we're getting started is through this in the industry support. It's exciting because this is an ongoing issue that I hear all a lot of people, including us, talk about, like, how are we going to get financial literacy down to that next generation? How are we going to help them become home buyers? Because all of, you know, the industry relies on that, right? If they can't figure it out, and we know there are ways that they don't know about, right? Like, um, I saw some of the research on your site, and it was talking about how many of that generation still thinks they have to 
put 20% down. And they may be relying on their parents, which let's just say, even their parents don't have that much financial literacy. No. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even, you know, I was talking about schools being required to teach financial literacy. Teachers don't have the financial literacy, you know, and, and money is often a very taboo subject in homes. So that's another issue. You know, we're doing some of the education that we provide is around mindset and understanding some of the impact that, you know, we're growing up in homes that are going to provide a certain mindset around money. And you need to challenge that in order to decide if, if your parents didn't own a home, you might not assume that you're going to own a home, you know, or think that that's totally out of reach for you. So, um, yeah, it's so important, I think, as an industry that we come together to be able to provide that education because no one else is going to do it. And and we're just going to continue to see homes become more and more out of reach for the next generation and financial wellness become out of reach. Um, and this divide continue to grow unless we step in as people who actually can fix this. That mindset shift is so key. And I know that, you know, you guys have, have worked on that uh, uh, mortgage coach, all that kind of stuff. I, I used to have a um, podcast with Brenna Nath, right, called Girl Funds, that uh, where we talk to people, um, women who were really in the fight with this, really talking, you know, working with consumers to um, help people who came from backgrounds who did not have um, that sort of financial literacy, or really that background. And, and Brenda and I were both uh, those people. So our, you know, our dads were in the military. My dad was in the military. My mom was a nurse. And I mean, I'm not saying they didn't, they, they were uh, very responsible with their money, but there was not the idea of investing your money. There was not the idea of your money can grow into more money. It was like, go out and work, check the box. These many hours means this much money. And we know, you know, being connected with our industry, how much different the world really works. But if you don't, if you don't have access to that, you have no idea that there's a whole world of things you can do. And real estate can be one of those you know, one of those vehicles, even if it's just your primary home, that's a huge, that's a huge thing. So I, you know, I talked with Logan Motoshami about the 30 year mortgage and how that is a huge hedge against inflation. And instead of like, what is my rent going to be next year or five years from now or 10 years from now, you know exactly what your payment's going to be. Gosh, that's such a good point, especially at a time when inflation is, feels like it's just out of control, you know, and, and people are, um, yeah, that's a, a way to stabilize your, your cost in some way. Um, but I think that people are finding it difficult to, um, to find any kind of financial literacy, even though we have access to so much information, but it's part of that mindset challenge. And if, if you, you know, if money brings anxiety or you haven't been taught to pay attention to these kinds of things, then you're going to skip right through any content or a lot of the content that you read or consume is going to kind of go over your head. And this is where I think it's so important to then have people that are coming into, like we're creating really engaging content and we're uh, making it very active and then bringing industry professionals into their communities in a way that allows people to feel safe in having those conversations is, um, I think, a way that we're going to be able to change that um, for people who who often do feel um, more anxiety around uh, like money decisions or, or just don't have that information. Well, I think if you're in uh, real estate or mortgage, although I know a lot of people who came from a similar background as I, I did that, like, you know, maybe not money, you know, like financially um, independent focused or whatever, but I think it's hard to realize how much people don't know and how much bad information there is on there, especially when they're getting most of their news. Let's just be honest from TikTok, from different social mm -hmm. channels, especially Gen Z, right? I mean, they're getting most of their news from um, non-mainstream or, or at least um, less mainstream uh, sources. Uh, case in point, um, I had an Uber driver today. I take, I travel a lot. So I take a ton of Ubers. I always love talking to people. It gives you a little bit of a, a snippet of that society. And he just launched into an entire conspiracy theory around numerology and, um, and financial stuff. And I, I mean, he doesn't, you know, it was just crazy. I was like, okay, all right, well, that's an interesting <laughs> perspective. And I'm like, he was like, oh yeah. And I mean, he, he mentioned this, this TikTok thing. And I mean, a specific, part of TikTok that, that he got this from. I was like, 
this is not good information. This is not true. And like, if you are basing it on this, like there are things you can do right now today to do it. It's not based, it's not a conspiracy based on numerology, whatever. But um, I just think that we who are in the industry or, or adjacent to the industry, it's hard to realize how bad the information is out there. Yeah. And I think, you know, we've, I've been doing research with millennial and now Gen Z home buyers for the last few years, um, tracking their levels of trust in the industry. And it's interesting to see how, like last year we measured trust in the loan officer and real estate agent with millennials versus Gen Z. And, uh, that number dropped so significantly. I think it was like 77% of millennials said they trusted their loan officer to help them make smart decisions with their mortgage. And it dropped to something in the low 50s with uh, Gen Z. And that's such a huge gap. And I think a lot of it is because they see a lot of information and they may trust some of it on TikTok or whatever, but they also know that they can't trust a bunch of stuff on TikTok. And so they're getting, but their messages are getting in them whether they want them to or not. And so that's a big message we have at First Home IQ is like, you, to own your future, you want to own those messages and like know, you know, be able to have confidence in um, the kind of information that you're consuming. And a lot of right now, it's not just in mortgage and, you know, financial, the financial space or real estate, it's in every industry, government, healthcare, media, you know, where we've lost trust in a lot of these other industries. But, um, but we want to create this like safe source for people to, to access that information. I remember when, you know, 10 years ago, we were talking about the millennials and their trust was a lot lower because they'd seen their, uh, their parents go through the great financial crisis and in many ways just get completely slammed by it. And then their, their prospects as they graduated into that, you know, recession era and, and, you know, so I, I, it's great to know that their trust has gone up. I think that's part of life experience as they bought a house or like, oh, I worked with this great person. So hopefully we can provide that same experience to Gen, Gen Z as they, as they work through their home ownership. What's interesting with millennials is their trust isn't up when it comes to institutions. They don't trust lenders, but they do trust more so the loan officer or the real estate agent. Um, but they, they don't trust banks. They don't trust lenders. That, that trust is really low. Um, I think it was two years ago, we um, found that two and three millennials, so they didn't trust lenders or they, they didn't think lenders were trustworthy or reliable. Um, so it's like, a you know, a huge amount of people, but then you trace it down and it's the institutional distrust. And I think some of it is coming from the financial crisis, but I think some of it is just coming from like, we have so much more transparency and knowledge about what's going on in the world now. Um, so again, it's just like with this much distrust and it kind of, it, chaotic messages in the world that we're experiencing today, there's a lot of, um, you know, bitterness, I think, with millennials when it comes to thinking about buying a home and who they can trust to talk about it. Um, and this is where First Home IQ can be a really great way for people to who are kind of pushed out as someone who is part of an industry they can't trust and be able to uh, be seen as someone that's different, you know, someone who is um doing something that shows them they they align with their values. They're someone who can be trusted. Well, and it's to your point, it's an opportunity, right? Because if you distrust the institution, but you can find a person you trust, that person, whether it's a realtor or a loan officer, has a huge you know, opportunity there to really forge a relationship. And I think that's what we learn more and more is like, there is no there is no substitute for that relationship, that human to human contact, even if we're using tech to really make that transaction better, find each other, whatever it is. But it's like at the end, it's it's a trust between two human beings. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, yeah, there's just the access to those individuals has, I think there's a little bit of a divide there too. I mean, millennials and Gen Z don't have a lot of friends who are in the industry. And so there, there's a disconnect there. Um, so I think the more that we can bridge that gap too, just by, um, by showing up, you know, and, and having, being involved in the community. And to your point earlier, there is a little bit more space now for people to come up with these kind of creative strategies. Um, and again, you know, I want it to be anyone who wants to be involved in First Home IQ or as an ambassador, that these are people who really care about educating the next generation, but also it is a great way to start showing up in a, in a way that these people don't have 
uh, you know, friends or family often that are showing them, you know, that this is, this is how you buy a home or who you can trust in, in having those conversations. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for being on it. So, and uh, I love seeing the action that you guys have taken on this. Like I said, we've talked about this for a long time to see someone acting on it, to see all you guys acting on it and, and creating a path that people in the industry can um, get involved locally, can help spread financial literacy, can benefit from that financial literacy. It's amazing to see. So thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm always so inspired by you and every, you know, everything you talk about and everything you do. Um, I want, I would love to encourage people if you do want to be involved in First Home IQ to go to firsthomeiq.com. Um, if you go to the Ella, there's like an LO and realtor page and you can check out the community there. You can also sign up to be an ambassador. So if you are interested in our next launch of the ambassadors, uh, once we've like tweaked the program or um, have some more feedback there, then we will be opening it up and would love to have your involvement as well. I love that. Yes. Listeners, go get signed up. Go find out what's going on. Kristen, thanks again. Thank you so much.